I was hanging out with Brendan. I said, so what, so what are you up to? And he said, you know, I'm making, I'm, I'm doing this uh, workshop festival at this really fantastic hotel. It's an art hotel and space, and all this kind of stuff. It just sounded really fantastic. And he said, um, and I said, so how does it work? And he said, well, we pick six directors and we put them in the hotel and we have them shoot everything in the hotel and their obstructions and things like that. And I said, oh, that sounds fantastic because, you know, I, I, I moved to Denmark somewhat because of Lars von Trier and the whole concept of the five obstructions. And uh, where's my eyeline? Uh, him. Oh, you can look at me. Okay. Him. You uh, or the camera? That the camera is fine. Camera me. Which one do you like? Camera. Camera? camera yeah. Right at the camera? Okay. Yeah. yeah, so when Brendan was talking about, you know, uh, the idea of doing a, a uh, directing a piece using obstructions, I thought that was fantastic because, I mean, I basically moved to Denmark because uh, I love Lars von Trier so much. And uh, Trier's companies in Tropa helped us out significantly with our first two films, get them off the ground and make it possible. Um, and uh, somewhere between the five obstructions and the Dogma 95 manifesto, I felt like this guy was defining uh, what should be happening with movies, whereas I had worked for Martin Scorsese and watched him on The Aviator and thought, like, you know, this is ridiculous. This is not how you make a movie. This is, you know, he has too much. He can't, he can't make any decisions anymore because he just has everything he could possibly want. Uh, and I felt like obstructions is the way to go. And so to hear about something like this, it's fantastic. I love the idea of having obstructions and trying to, you know, pull something off under, under duress and, and see where, you know, Necessity can be the mother of invention. You can find creativity, uh, you know, in in, in in what you think is actually a, a hole in the ground. I guess my style is is extreme visual perfection. I really like to spend a hell of a lot of time on each image, and I like to think of each image as almost a canvas you can hang on the wall. Um, and when you're working under obstructions, it makes it very difficult to create canvases. Um, and uh, and that becomes a drawback for me. And it also becomes very difficult to do a hell of a lot of work with production design um, and theatrical technique. I, I really come from a background of the theater um, where you really have a lot of time to rehearse and practice and get things just the way you want, and look at them and change and look at them and change. And this doesn't give you that option. I'm sure I'll make a movie that's confusing. <laughs> I'm sure I'll make a movie that is uh, difficult to get right at first because um, I'll screw up the narrative badly because I'm very bad with narrative. Um, very good at, or not very good, but I, my, 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 my style is about building worlds. I like to build worlds, I like to build situations. So I made one movie that takes place uh, in an infinite airport, and I made one movie um, where a couple find themselves in a destroyed house, and we find out that it's basically a fable for the American invasion of Iraq. And this movie, uh, I don't know, I've been, I think it might be about waterboarding. But it might also be about geniuses in a hotel who are trapped and Fox News. And I'm trying to deal with a lot of things that make me angry all at the same time, and I have no idea how I'm going to make any of that make any kind of sense, and especially not in six-page scripts, which I've very, pretty much figured out if it's any more than six pages, I'm completely fucked. So, uh, so what, one last question. Uh, I'm sure John has one more for you after that, though. Why is it that you have a woman inside uh, your hotel's uh, closet. <laughs> well, I was writing with this woman named Sammy for a while. I was in Copenhagen and she was here and we were writing back and forth and she's, she's a fantastic writer. She did some really amazing stuff. But um, we found our... I, I asked her to incorporate so many things that I was trying to do. 11 burlesque dancers and waterboarding and... Um, uh, and things about Theresa Stott and Auschwitz and something to do with Fox News and a bunch of other things that I was trying to figure out and and uh, and she did it. She totally, she actually was able to do it and wrote this brilliant script which is, you know, far too long, <laughs> far too impossible to shoot under the circumstances um, and it's completely not her fault because I, I put her up to it and by the time I got here I was like, Sammy, we got to change it completely and she's like, I gotta be honest with you. I don't do revisions. I normally just write, and I was like, I totally understand why, because your stuff is brilliant. And uh, and she's like, but you know what? I think I know who should do it. And she said, you should talk with Sarah. And Sarah, I called last night in North Carolina, 
and uh, and she was like, I think I know what to do with this. I think I can pull this together. And I was like, okay, well you have to come here. So eight hours later she was here, and now she's, and she likes to sit in the closet when she works, so she's sitting in the closet in the hotel room writing, and we've been just kind of chatting all day about all kinds of things, and we know a lot about waterboarding, so if you need to know about waterboarding, you come, come ask us, because we've been doing a lot of research about waterboarding. And, um, and torture in general, although I think we're going to have to throw the waterboarding out, which is a little sad. You guys sad. know waterboarding, it's fine. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, but uh, yeah, we've been kind of batting back and forth all day, and she's trying to turn my madness into English on a, on a screenplay. Uh, I kind of come from the old school of directing, where the director is the guy who doesn't actually know how to do anything and surrounds himself with a bunch of brilliant people and stays out of the way. It's what I learned in graduate school, anyway. I, I went to graduate school for uh, directing theater and um, the first day they asked us you know what is a director and everybody raised their hand and said things like it's the guy who has the concept and the vision and all this kind of stuff and basically um, the teacher said that's okay for you to think that because it's only the first day but if you use the word concept or vision in my class again you will leave my class and from that point on uh, he really taught us what a director is. A director is somebody who steer, you know, tries to steer very lightly while he picks a brilliant team to make amazing things. Unless you're Stanley Kubrick. But I'm not.